Or more like this, eh? <laughs> anywhere where you see daily Faro Timi video, eh? Anybody will get sense and like words of wisdom. No say you're not supposed to skip that kind of video. Because daily Faro Timi is one of the few people for this country say anytime he open your mouth to talk now words of wisdom and you know they ever they, you know, they ever fear to speak the truth at any time as i declare you so he don't come and he don't change and for i next chairman personally now so we could now watch the video as they reveal certain things we some of us be no know concerning this i next chairman watch the video comment your opinion and make sure so you share the video in the light of how the last presidential elections and the, the national elections has been described as one of the worst in this country's electoral process, questions are being raised by what metrics? What's your analysis? Well, um, I'll be careful to speak strictly to only what I know, either to be facts or what I witnessed on my own. What happened on the 25th of February might be evaluated in two parts. The first part should deal with the people themselves. The Nigerian people, I can speak specifically to Lagos State because this is where I reside. The Nigerian people turned out in their numbers, in unprecedented numbers, to exercise their franchise. That is um, not in consonance with what had happened before that day, the level of citizens' engagement with the process. So all the promises that INEC had given people, the works that had been done by multiple civil society organizations and individuals who had reconnected the people back to the PVC in the hope that we might be able to have genuine changes at the polls, in deference to the yearnings and aspirations of a lot of Nigerians. So as far as Nigerians were concerned, Nigerians trooped out, they were engaged, but that is the point where elections ended, citizens' engagement. And the word citizen is important and we'll come back to it as I answer your question. So Nigerians were generally engaged, even in parts of Nigeria where they had given up on Nigeria. And it's not just in the Southeast. It's always very easy to identify the change movement with the Southeast, which was, which is the home region of the candidate that came to symbolize the yearning and aspiration for change. But when you consider the fact that in places like Benue, in places like Plato, in places like Yobe, in places like Boronu, in places like Rivers, in Edo, in Delta, in vast parts of the Southwest itself, there was a palpable demand for a different direction. And the people came out like that. So you realize very quickly that where the system had not expected to find coercion, they were shocked to find coercion. Where the system had not expected that common purposes would be found, common purposes were found across the country. So the people insofar as it relates to the 25th of February, demonstrated a willingness and a desire to live together as one and to change the system through the peaceful route offered by the electoral system. But that was where I ended. Heineck proved to be exactly what it has always been, uh, completely Nigerian. Nigerian in the sense of everything that has been bad with our country for a long time. It preferred to be ruled by impunity instead of the guidelines and order that it had promised the Nigerian people. So in every way that it was possible for INEC to fail as an institution, it failed woefully. In the same environment, in a system where they are truly citizens, strictly so-called, in a system governed by law, Professor Yakubu, he should be in jail by now because of the multiple infractions of the guidelines that he himself publicly eulogized, sold to everybody from Nigeria to, in the, to the international community. Straight down the line, we had multiple failures. These are already in the public space. And I speak as Dele Faro to me, a retired lawyer, in case you have forgotten. 
Now, in that failure, you had INEC servers, or whatever they called it, being switched off. You had beavers unable to transmit result, not because it is incapable of doing so, but because human beings decided to intervene. Because if they allowed the system to work, the room for impunity would disappear. So everything the man promised, the man promised us, he promised a Rolls Royce. But he didn't even deliver a jalopy. He delivered an omolanke unfit for purpose. That is what the man has done at great cost. The money that he has just wasted, squandered, organizing the nonsense that he has now called an election, which is the point of departure with the 25th. The, I am careful, not because I give, not because I am particularly respectful of any one of the many lying institutions, but because some people have elected to go to court, I am hoping that that court system would be the perfect place to unrobe the Nigerian state. I remember when we were talking pre after the answers, and I was explaining why we were going to the tribunal. I, we, I said it, and we were on record as saying that we didn't expect to get justice out of the system, but that since they had opened a tribunal, that we would go to that tribunal and use the tribunal to establish the fact that there was indeed a massacre. And we eventually used that tribunal, and kudos to the chairwoman of the tribunal, we used that tribunal, the same tribunal set up by the state, comprising of members only nominated by the state. We used that same tribunal to prove that the governor was lying. We used that tribunal to prove that the Nigerian police and the Nigerian army are institutional killers and liars. We used the same tribunal to unrobe the state to the point where you began to have inspectors discovering camcorders and things. So we are um, confident that there will be team at the tribunal would equally use the tribunal to unrobe INEC and different members of the debauched lot who sit in that place and pretend to be serving the country whilst they are ruining it and lining their own pockets. So insofar as it relates to the 25th of February, yes, the people did their part and INEC failed them as it has always done. The police failed them as they always have. Because the police stood by whilst thugs who work in tandem with governors. This is, this is where I speak to the confluence of interest between the criminal elements. Sometimes, even now, you now know that the criminal elements and the traditional institutions in certain parts of the country are in bed with the state. So you have an, you have an unholy trinity. And the people are the constant victims. So yes, we had an election, we the people did. INEC ensured that our will has not been reflected. Now consider the fact that the credibility of that election had been called to question. Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians are quite skeptical about the next governorship and the state houses of the assembly's election. Rightly so. There are widespread uh, voter apathy, so to speak. Uh, and consider the fact that Nigerians are quite skeptical, they are afraid that their votes might not count mm. and that they are going to the poll again on Saturday will be a waste of time and effort. Let me tell you this. If our votes would not count, we wouldn't have seen INEC as desperate as it, is. As it was on the 25th. Our votes count. If our votes will not count, they will not be going around burning markets. If our votes will not count, they will not be busy buying all sorts of aspired politicians to come back to their side so that they can. It's like almost, it's almost like football transfer season. <laughs> You're having governorship candidates bought, political parties bought, but that, is, that should not offer any surprises to anyone. Instead of buying delegates, they were buying governors. So why should it surprise anybody that they are buying candidates who are not really candidates in any election, if the truth be told? How come that people who had a lot of negative things to say about them yesterday have suddenly become their friends today after they bought an extra week from INEC? Mm. You should understand that what they want is voters' apathy because it is in the midst of voters' apathy that they are able to achieve their goal. No matter how much intimidation, no matter how, if they like, let them have a thousand MC mushroom picking roaming the streets of Lagos. 
if the people are engaged in the process, if they are housed in force and in number, and they are voting, the truth of the matter is that the powers of the MC Monsoon Pekins of this world are minimized when we turn out in our numbers. Refusing to come out and vote because you are afraid, you've been scared, you've been divided, you've been left disillusioned by what has happened, merely leaves the space open to those who had set out originally to ensure that that is exactly what you will do. Remember, in answering your earlier question, I pointed out that when we decided to go to the NSAS panel, for instance, we went there because we were convinced that we had preponderance of evidence to prove what we were saying about the culpability of the governor, the army, the police, and the state itself. So we used the venue provided by the government. Now, if we had ignored to go ab initio, we would have handed them the opportunity to do what they had hoped to do, which was to create the narrative and manage the narrative and have a show before the world and call it a tribunal. They would have had control of the narrative. And they had done a fantastic job, aided by multiple people that Nigerians would never have expected to find culpable in that kind of ignoble act. But they had the narrative already until Ramimba stepped in. Anyway, that's another story for another day. But in this election, our people must understand that if you do not buy the ticket, you cannot win a lottery. Mm. If you have given hope ab initio that, oh, because of all the things they have done, because there is a possibility that they might be violent because of these, there are always going to be a thousand and one reasons not to come out. But understand this, not coming out validates the evil that you are running away from. You are going to live with it for the next four years. The ones that are scaring you away from voting, those ones will go to bed after the elections. The ones that are going to come to you will be the ones wearing bow ties and things. When they come, they will not be coming with cutlasses, but I guarantee you, you will be seeing all sorts of bills. Because those ones that are scaring you off now, including the beaded clowns, they make money from our collective misery. Mm. The one that I find funniest about all of this is the fact that the indigenes who are being coerced into celebrating Oro in these late hours, okay. they are going to come through the toll gates that the system has built. They will pay the same amount as the people they are asking them to be afraid of. Nobody is going to discriminate as to who is passing through and how much that person is paying. The collapsed infrastructure that we have all endured for the last 24 years, it will remain. It's not the Igbo in Lagos Day that has been digging up the roads that all of us are going through bad roads. You live, when you leave your house in the morning, if you live in the Lekki Ekwe Axis, for instance, if you live at Aouyaya and your office is in uh, VI, typically, that was where most people who went to buy land and have today built in that area, that's where they work, Ikoi VI. It's a minimum of three hours. If you make the error of leaving your home later than five o'clock, it's about four hours just to get to work in the morning. It's not going to change simply because you've, you revalidated a threat that you have received from those you should know are your true enemies. So when you look at the totality of what is at stake on Saturday, and what is at stake on Saturday is something that has never happened before. Let's be frank with ourselves. Lagos is important to the future of Nigeria on multiple levels. When Obasanjo was busy chasing Tinubu around in 2003, 2004, I wonder at the time that Obasanjo was creating a monster that would bite everybody in the ass because he made Tinubu into some sort of opposition figure, a progressive politician. He helped him build his image. Whilst the man had exceedingly rapacious policies, stripping the people of Lagos State of their wealth and privatizing the Commonwealth, Obasanjo's just overreach made it possible for him to operate without being challenged. Because it became, oh, he's, he's the one challenging Obasanjo's just running rampage all over the place. And he created this monster. The monster he created during his own tenure when he should have focused on succession and obedience to the rule of law, credible elections, that monster is what is biting everybody today. So now, that monster 
is threatening to take over the seat of power in Abuja, which is purchased mandate, a purchased mandate. That monster is now looking to use the instrumentality of eight ethnic bigotry in addition to religion, which he had long established as a basis for power, to retain power in the most important of all states in Nigeria. Maybe people don't understand this. Lagos is the fifth, either the fourth or the fifth largest economy in Africa. It doesn't have the fifth best school system. It does not have the fifth best rail system. It does not have the fifth best healthcare delivery system. It is not ranked fifth in anything good. And it has been the sole possession and toy of a man for 24 years. That man is now doing everything he can to retain possession of the state. Whether it burns it down completely before it is taken, or whether he is able to take it by foul mean. He doesn't care. Power is to be, you, you grab it, you chase it. That is, the, that is his concept of power. So Lagos State election on Saturday is beyond, it's not just about casting a ballot. It's about determining the future of the country. It's about deciding whether you are happy to be governed by what is essentially a criminal franchise, because that is what it is. <laughs> a franchise that will deploy all manner of violence in order to retain power, that will deploy hatred in order to retain power. That is not, and it is not, it does not a political franchise, that is a criminal franchise.